In the economics course, what do we mean when we talk about unemployment, and how can we express that through diagrams? Before we start off, there are some terms you should definitely know, and you've already read about this. We'll animate the diagrams, but these terms should be familiar to you already. So, I suggest you know structural, seasonal, and frictional unemployment. And I suggest you know that the three of those together make up the natural rate of unemployment. Uh, and finally, I suggest you know cyclical unemployment, which is not included in the natural rate of unemployment. Our labor market diagram will be very similar to what we know from microeconomics and most of macro. Um, we're going to build it with some slight differences, though. And you can see here on the y-axis we have average wage rate. So we're just talking about the cost of labor, really. And then down here, we're looking at, uh, on the x-axis, the quantity of labor that's employed at any given time. So we're going to use these to put together what's known as the aggregate demand for labor and also the aggregate supply of labor. We'll talk about those in a few minutes. And we're also going to use them to put together something that's known as the total labor force. First, let's take a look at the aggregate supply of labor. I'll switch back to my blue. So, just like our supply curve, the aggregate supply of labor is going to slope upwards. What does that mean? That means if I raise the wage rate, we should get more people working. Uh, at a wage of, let's say, $5 an hour, uh, we might have 100 people working. And if the average wage rate is $10 an hour, we should expect more people to work, maybe 200 people to work. So what this aggregate supply of labor curve, or really line, is telling us is that as wages rise, more people will supply their labor on the market. It's intuitive, and it's very similar to supply, simple supply we looked at in microeconomics. We've also got as a component here the aggregate demand for labor. Aggregate meaning everything added together, and then demand for labor is how many workers do you need at any given price. What this is saying is it's very similar to the demand curve. If the wage rate is very high, employers are only going to want to hire a number of workers. Let's say the average wage rate is $20 an hour. Uh, employers may only want to hire 100 workers. At a lower average wage rate, this is again just like demand, we would expect to see employers want to hire more labor. Let's say 400 workers this time. Why is that? Um, employers will possibly substitute workers for machinery. So where there used to be one worker and one machine, there may now be two workers. So there may be, uh, the employer may replace machines with workers as the wage rate falls. And there is some evidence of this in clothing manufacture going on right now in 2016. If we merge the components of those together, so far we have roughly a supply of labor, we have an aggregate demand for labor, and I'm going to take some liberties here in the way I diagram this the first time. We're going to have something called a TLF. TLF is total labor force. So total labor force uh, is, is representing that as the wage rate rises, so you, can see, you can see the wage rate rising along this axis, and as that rises, more people join the labor force. So you can see this curve has some slope to it. It's not much. It's pretty inelastic. But as wages go up, people who may not have been in the labor force, who may have left, they may have become discouraged workers, they may have retired, and they may be willing to come back. As those wage rates go up, they will rejoin the labor force. So if we take this whole diagram and we put it together, we can use it to express the natural rate of unemployment. If we look at the labor market, it's actually at an equilibrium now. So if we say we're at wage star, we can say, oh, okay, at that wage rate, the aggregate demand for labor and aggregate supply of labor match. So we have an equilibrium in the labor market, and there are uh, 
Q number of workers working. But we can also see that there's some distance between we can also see that there's some distance between the total labor force and this equilibrium. So what is that distance? Very briefly, that distance is the structural. So that distance is categorized by some structural some seasonal and some frictional unemployment. And if you add those up, you can see that they should give you some understanding of what the unemployment rate might be. And that distance in here between who's working and the total labor force is going to add up to the natural rate of unemployment. So again, this is perfectly normal, perfectly natural, and regular to have some structural, to have some seasonal, and to have some frictional, and that again makes up the natural rate of unemployment. What we've discussed so far is the concept of equilibrium unemployment. When the labor market is in equilibrium, there's still some unemployment. Those are the structural, seasonal, and frictional components you've seen that make up the natural rate of unemployment. Next up will be disequilibrium unemployment. See you at the next video.